Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to make a simple character move around the map. Let's begin. Okay, so this is my scene. I have a character playing a default idle animation. In the code here, I have a base character class. It exposes some functions to play the animations that we're going to need. So in this case, we can play the walking animation and the idle animation. Both these functions take a vector for the animation direction. This base class essentially is the connection between the logic and the visuals. We always want to write code that is decoupled from other systems. So the movement logic will use these functions, but it doesn't matter how they are implemented. We could switch to a different animation system, and as long as these functions do the same thing, then everything would work just the same. So with that, let's start by making our character script. So in here, let's make a new c -sharp script, and we're going to call this the player character. Going to place the script on the player character game object, which as you see already has the base as another component. So let's open it. So in here, the first thing we're going to do is do a private void awake. And on our awake, let's grab a reference to the base class that is on the same game object. So in here, make a private for the player character base and call it player character base. And we're going to grab this from the game object that get component of type player character base. Okay. So we can use this reference to access all of our animations. So now let's do some movement on our private void update. We're going to test for some input. Now there are many ways to test for input, including getting it from a gamepad or joystick. But for this video, let's keep things as simple as possible. So we're simply going to test for the keyboard. So in here do an if input dot get key of keycode.w. We're going to use w, a, s, and d as our movement keys. In here we are using get key instead of get key down because we want this to be true every frame where the key is pressed. So as long as the w is pressed, we want this code to run. So in here, in order to do some simple movement, we just do a transform.position and add to that position a new vector 3. And since this is w, we want him to move up. So on the X, give him a zero, and on the Y, give him a one to move him vertically going up. Then we multiply this by a speed variable. So in here, define a float for our speed, and let's give it at 40F, just for testing. And afterward, let's also multiply by time dot delta time. Okay, so if the W key is pressed down, on every frame, we are going to modify the transform position and we're going to increase it by a vector moving upwards multiplied by a speed variable and then multiplied by time dot delta time. This variable contains the number of seconds since the very last frame. So if your game is running at one frame per second, then this would return one. And if your game is running at 30 frames per second, then this would be 0.033. So essentially by multiplying it by our delta time, we can make our movement independent of our frame rate. So using this, our character should move up 40 units every second. So let's test. Here's my character. And if I press W, Yep, there you go, he's moving up at a constant speed. Okay, so that's the basic of our movement. Now let's apply it to all of our other directions. So back in our code, first we want to check for the other keys, but we only want to modify the transform position once in order to keep our code nice and clean. So let's copy this from here and place it at the end of all the keys. And in here, let's define some floats for the move X and a float for the move Y. So these are the variables that we're going to use to see where we are moving. So in the case of W, we're going to set the move Y to be 1F, so we're going to move upwards. So let's copy to use all the other keys. So you got W, you got the S, the A, and the D. So on W, you move up. On the Y, on the S, you move down. On the A, you move to the left, so minus 1 on the move X. And on D, we set the move X to be plus 1. And then here we define a vector three for our movement direction, which will be a new vector three using our move X and our move Y. Then that's what we're going to use in order to move them. So again, we're adding to the position our move direction multiplied by our speed multiplied by our delta time. So let's test and see if our character can now move in every direction. Okay, here's the character and move right, move left, move up and move down. And yep, our character is now currently moving in every direction. Now there's actually a hidden issue in here, which is if we move diagonally, we are moving faster than if we move in just one direction. So here I'm going to the right, and if I also go up, you can see the character is moving quite a bit faster than just in one direction. This is not our intended behavior, so let's look at what's causing it. 
So over here in our code, we are setting move X and move Y floats and then creating a direction with it. However, if we have both the X and the Y being set, then this vector will have a magnitude of more than one. This is what caused him to move faster when he's moving diagonal. In order to fix that, all we need to do is normalize this vector to make sure the magnitude is always one. So if we are moving both on the Y and on the X, then both of them will be set to one. So this vector would have one, one, but then since we are normalizing it, we are setting the magnitude to just one. So essentially we get a vector of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which is correctly moving in that direction. So let's test and our speed should now be correct. And yep, move to right, move up, move diagonally. And yep, the speed is now correct, going in every single direction. All right. So now that we have basic movement working, let's apply some animations to make it actually look correct. So back in code here, the first thing we're going to do is put this code into its own separate function to keep our code nice and clean. So in here, make a private void and call it handle movement. And we're essentially going to copy all of this in there. And we're going to call this function on our update. Okay, the code is much more clean right now. So now we have two types of animations. We have a walking animation and an idle animation. So here, let's make a boolean to identify if the character is idle. So we do a bool is idle. Now we're idle if we have no movement, which essentially means if the move x equals zero and the move y also equals zero. If both of them are at zero, then the idle is true. So then we simply do an if, if is idle is true then we want to play the idle animation. So again, we use our base character. So player character base, we go in there and play the idle animation. It needs a vector. So for now, give it vector 3.0. And if we are not idle, then we are actually moving. So let's do player character base dot play the walking animation. And we're going to play it towards our move direction. So in here like that. Okay, so let's test and see if he's correctly idle or walking. Okay, there he is, currently idle. Now if I press down, yep, there you go. He's playing the animation and right and diagonally and going up and so on and yep. Now if I stop him, yep, he stops, goes back to idle, walk animation, idle, walk animation, idle. Okay, great. So the logic seems to be working. However, we have one tiny issue, which is our idle direction. In here, if I move up and then I stop, yep, you can see that he chose the idle animation to be looking down when it should really be looking up. So if I'm moving to the right, I want him to stop, look to the right, move up, stop, and he should be looking up. So let's see the code. So the issue is in here when we are playing the idle animation, we are using a vector three of zero. That is because since both of these are zero, that's the only vector we have. So what we need is to store the last direction that we moved and use that as our idle direction. So let's go all the way up here and make a private vector three for the last move direction. And down here, when we actually move, let's set the last move direction to be this move here. And then we can use the last move here as our animation direction for our idle. So whenever we move, we update this variable. When we stop moving, we use it as our idle direction. So let's test. Okay, there he is. I can walk around and if I move up and I stop, yep, there you go. He's now playing the idle animation looking up, which was the last movement direction. Do the same thing to the right, and now he's idle, idle, and so on and so forth. And yep, everything is correct, moving in every direction and playing the correct idle animations. So there you have it. We set up some very simple character movement. Our character can move around and play either the walking or the idle animations. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.